All right, so this is our third video on graphing systems of equations. So we've done uh, graphing systems of equations to find the point of intersection, um, and we have done substitution. So there's a third way to solve, and that is by solving by elimination, which is this method here. This is kind of the sledgehammer approach. Um, for solving systems of equations, um, and when we get, if we end up doing uh, three variable systems, which I, I haven't quite decided, those are kind of tedious. Um, this is a method that we'll use a lot. Um, anyways, follow along. I think it's best for you guys to see this by um, uh, by actually seeing an example. Um, the short version of this is that we are going to we're going to multiply and subtract multiply and subtract the equations. Okay, this is kind of a sneaky way to go about doing this. Um, so as opposed to substitution where we solve for a variable and then we plug it into the other equation, for this one here we're going to work with the entire example, but we have a rule here and that is we need terms, we need, let's change this from the term to a term, we need to, in order to eliminate, we need a term to be opposites of each other. And by opposites, I mean negatives. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example here. So we have 5x plus 3y is equal to negative 19. 8x plus 3y is equal to negative 25. So each one of these, so 5x, the 3y, and the 19, so on and so forth, each of those is a term. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a term that is in each equation but has opposite sign. Okay, so if we look here, 5a, 5x and 8x are not the same term. They don't have the same coefficient to them. They have the same variable, but not the same coefficient. We have 3y and 3y. That's good. We have the same variable with the same coefficient, but they're not opposites. They're not negatives of each other. And then the negative 19, negative 25, those are just constants. We just carry those through. What we're looking for are for the x's and for the y's. We're looking for those coefficients to be the same or to be opposites of each other. So they're not opposites, so we're going to get sneaky here. What we're going to do is we're going to make them opposites. In order to make them opposites, we're going to pick one of the equations and we're going to subtract it from the other one. Or actually, I'm sorry, we're going to multiply it by, a ne by negative 1 and then we're going to add them together. Okay, so let me write that here. We're going to multiply by negative 1, and then we are going to add together. Okay. Sometimes this is different. Sometimes you'll, you won't have to do this first step. You won't have to do the multiplication by negative 1. Sometimes you'll just add them together. In this case, we don't have the opposite, so we have to do the multiplication by 1. I'm going to multiply the first equation, the top one by negative 1. You don't, it doesn't really matter which one you do, but you only do it to one of them. So I'm going to multiply this top one by negative 1. And let's rewrite that over here. I'm actually just going to rewrite that down here. So I'm going to get negative 5x minus 3y is equal to positive 19. Okay, so I've taken a negative 1 and I've distributed it through the entire equation. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. Okay, so we'll do the math here. 8x minus 5x is 3x. Okay, 3y minus 3y is 0, and then negative 25 and 19 added together, and this is embarrassing. Your teacher cannot do mental math. So let's see here, we're going to do 19 minus 25, and we get negative 6. All right, so we end up with negative 6 here. Okay, well that gives us a brand new equation. We now have 3x is equal to negative 6. We can solve that for x, and we get x is equal to negative 2. All right, and now it's just like the previous, uh, the, the substitution problems. We have one of the variables. We have x is equal to negative 2. So we can go back and we can plug it into either one of the equations and find y. So I'm going to plug it into uh, the top one here. So I'll get 5. I'm going to get 5 times negative 2 plus 3y is equal to negative 19. So that's negative 10 plus 3y is equal to negative 19. So 3y is equal to negative 9, and then y will be equal to negative 3. Okay, that gives me the point 
negative 2, negative 3 as the solution for this system of equations. And that is elimination in a nutshell. Okay, So we multiply by negative 1 in order to get numbers to be the same, and then we're going to add them together. There is uh, an additional step, and we'll see if we have an example of that where we have to start getting really clever in order to make stuff work together. But we'll start with that one first. Um, let's see here. So let's go to the next page. Okay. I'm going to pause the video here. I want you guys, just like we did in the last video, I want you guys to try solving these two here. So I'll give you guys the first step on each of these. We notice we have 2a, 2a, we have 6x and 6x. So let's multiply the bottom equation this time by a negative 1. Okay. Multiply the bottom equation by a negative 1. You guys can rewrite your equations and go ahead and solve these. And I will, uh, I'll try to give you guys the first step, and then you guys can solve for the second variable. Okay. All right, here we go. So I solved these up here. I distributed through with the negative sort of thing. So we have 2a minus 2a will give me 0. Negative 5 minus 5 will give me negative 10b. Negative 20 minus 20 is a negative 40. Solve this for b will give me b is equal to 4. Plug that. I plugged it into the top equation. This case, simplified it out, and I get a is equal to 0. So I have a is 0 and b is 4. Uh, for the second equation, same thing, subtracted the bottom one from the top one. So I ended up with negative 7y is equal to 14, which means y is equal to 2. I plugged that into the top equation. When I simplified it out, I ended up with 9 over 2, okay, when you simplify everything out. So there you go. That is elimination. Now, this is the easy cases because we have um, terms that have the same coefficients on the variables. So here we have the fives are together. This one here, you actually didn't even need to do the subtraction. You could have added these directly because this is a minus five. This is a plus five on this one. So you could have just added this directly. There's a couple of different ways to do this first one. The second one, you had to do the subtraction because the y's were not equal. Okay. Um, these are fairly easy when you have matching coefficients. Okay, they're really straightforward to do. When you don't have matching coefficients, there's an extra step that we have to do. And we're going to look at that in this example here. Okay, here you'll notice we don't have any matching coefficients. What we have to do is we have to make the coefficients match. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply to get a common multiple. So you have a couple of ways that you can go about doing this. Here's the way I'm going to do this. I always do this to get the smallest multiple of two common numbers. So the smallest common multiple of 8 and 5 I can think of is uh, 40. Is 40 just by multiplying them together. The smallest multiple I can get between 2 and 3 is 6. So I'm going to figure out a way to make the a's equal to 6a and go from there. So the top one, in order to get a 6a, I need to multiply by 3. So I have to multiply the entire top row by 3. In order to get a 6a in this one, I have to multiply by 2. So I need to multiply that whole row by 2. Okay. So if I do those distributions here, I will end up with 6a plus 3 times 8 is 24, so 24b uh, equal to negative 24. This bottom one will be 6a minus 10b is equal to 44. Okay, just by distributing the two through. So I end up with these two, and it's what we call scaling. Um, if we're in an honors class and we were doing uh, matrices or we were doing more advanced uh, systems of equations, we would call them scale uh, scalars for when we deal with matrices. Um, you guys don't need to worry about that so much. But it's, a, it's the multiplicative constant that we multiply by in order to make a term equal to the other one. Okay, so now the six, now the a's are equal to each other, so I can subtract them from uh, um, themselves. I'm going to move this down here, and I'll do that scratch work. If you guys want to go ahead and add these together, or I'm sorry, subtract these from each other, and get rid of the a's and solve for a and b, I'll have all the scratch work done for you guys down here in just a minute. All right, so here we go. I took the two equations that I had found here in this previous step when we did the scalar multiplication in order to get the same coefficients on the a's. And I need to subtract the uh, one of the equations from the other one. That way I multiply by negative 1. So I multiplied the bottom one by, it really doesn't matter, but I multiplied the bottom one. So 6a minus 6a gives me 0. 24, uh, when I multiply the bottom one by a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive. So 24 plus 10 is 34. So I get 34b. And then this negative makes this a negative 44. So negative 24 minus 44 
is negative 68. That's why this one didn't work out. Okay. Remember to carry your negatives. Don't be like your teachers. So this should be negative 68, which means this is negative 2. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to fix my work over here because this number is wrong. I figured out why. Give me just a second. All right, that's better. Okay, so now we know that B is equal to negative 22 when your teacher doesn't rush through the work and, and drop a negative. So 34B is equal to negative 68. Divide by 34 gives us B is equal to negative 2. We're going to take negative 2. I plugged it into the bottom one just because multiplying 2 by 10 is a little bit cleaner than multiplying it by 24. So I use the bottom one for this. Okay, It works either way. I plug negative 2 in here, so I get 6a minus 10 minus 2 is equal to 44. All this works wrong. Let's go to the green section here. So negative 10 times negative 2 is positive 20. So it gives me this work here. So 6a plus 20 is equal to 44. Subtract 20 from both sides gives me 24. So 6a is equal to 24. Divided by 6 gives me a is equal to 4 for my final value. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next page. Have some examples here for you guys to try. Um, I'm going to pause the video. You guys should have a feel for this now. I'll get you guys through the first step since on both of these you guys have to multiply by a scalar. Um, so here's what we're going to do. For this first one here, 5 and 2 have a common multiple of 10. I don't like that number here. There's really a 1 here in front of this. So a common multiple of 1 and 3 is 3. So we're going to multiply the top one by 3. Here on this bottom one, common multiple of 2 and 6 is 12. Again, a common multiple of 1 and 3 is 3. So we're going to multiply the top one on number 2 by 3. So the top one by 3 on both of these. Okay. So I'll, I'll do that first step here, and then I'll give you guys the answer. And then you guys can come back and check your work and give it a try. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's wrap these up. So I multiplied by 3 in the top line here on the first one, giving me these two equations. When you solve them, I'm not going to do the solving part. I want you guys to try to do the solving part. I ended up with negative 6, 2 for my final answer. For the second one, when I multiplied the top equation by 3, I ended up with 6x minus 3y is equal to 21. Now that's interesting because we have a 6x minus 3y is equal to 14. That should uh, signal something here because we end up with 6x minus 3y and 6x minus 3y. If you subtract these from each other, you get 0 for both. What you'll end up with here is if you subtract this from the bottom one, you'll end up with 0, 0 is equal to a number. So ultimately, we end up with 0 is equal to a number. Well, 0 can't be equal to a number. Okay, That's very true. So this is actually an inconsistent system which is to say that these two lines, whenever you have the same coefficients on both the x's and y's, it's going to work out to being parallel. Okay, That's a good thing for you guys to write down. So if you have matching coefficients on your x's and your y's, it'll work out to being parallel. You can also take these two lines, solve them for y, put them in y equals mx plus b form, and you guys will see that the slopes, the value of m, is equal for both lines. So you guys are able to solve that to try that. Okay, let's go to our last page. Okay, so when we're finding, uh, well, what are we finding when we solve for or graph a system of equations? We are looking for the intersection, the intersection of two lines. Okay, so your ultimate solution is always going to be an xy coordinate pair, or it's going to be just a, a, the, the same line, which is when we have the dependent scenario, but that's kind of a special case. In general, you're looking for the intersection of two lines. What types of systems can we have? We have the, um, we can run through this, your teacher can do this, we have the inconsistent system. The inconsistent system is when we have parallel lines. Okay, we have the, let's see here, we have the dependent system. Okay, the dependent system is when you have the same line multiple times. Okay, and the last one is the independent system, which is the one we want, independent, okay, independent system where we have one intersection. Okay. All right, and how do the algebraic solutions show whether the lines are intersecting, parallel, or the same line? When they are intersecting, you will end up with a single point, an x and y value. When they are parallel, the algebraic solution will be two numbers that are not equal. 
So you'll end up with two numbers, two numbers, an A value, a B value, like whatever, and they'll be said to be equal. So you'll end up with something like 3 is equal to 2. That's not a true statement. Okay, so whenever you end up and you simplify down your system of equations and you end up with two numbers that are not the same, like we did here on this last example, we ended up with 0 was equal to some number when we added these together. That turns out to be, in this case here, it was actually 0 is equal to 7. Whenever you end up with two numbers that are not equal to each other, you have a parallel system. And when you have the same line, you end up with a number equal to a number. Okay, cool. Wonderful. And that should get you guys through elimination. Uh, go ahead and watch the video again if you guys need to. Finish up your notes. And uh, we will go over stuff um, when we come back into class on the next time. And we will work on the, the book assignment together then. And I'll have a worksheet for you guys as well. I want to make sure you guys have some extra practice. Substitution and elimination come back, um, again, pretty heavily in math analysis and in pre-calculus. So that's something I want to make sure you guys are comfortable doing.